Hey there nerds. Welcome to yet another video on our channel. Today we'll be looking at the Tudor period in England. We'll also be looking at different aspects related to the same. So, let's get started. The Tudor period in England and Wales lasted from 1485 to 1603 with the reign of Elizabeth I until 1603. known as the Elizabethan period the house of tudor with its first monarch henry the 7th ruled during this time historian john guy argued that england was economically healthier more expansive and more optimistic under the tudors than in any period since roman times the tudor dynasty coincided with the first spread of printed material thanks to william caxton's press in 1476 just before henry the 7th's reign this encouraged writing and influenced the standardization of the english language during henry the 8th's reign england broke away from the roman catholic church and saw a weakening of feudal ties leading to increased power for the monarchy England developed stronger political ties with the continent leading to exposure to renaissance culture humanism became essential in english literary and intellectual life focusing on the study and imitation of latin classics and secular concerns the reign of elizabeth the 1st was a fruitful era in literary history with energetic writers producing various works reflecting a new sense of nationalism the energy of england's writers matched that of its mariners and merchants accounts by men such as richard hakluyt samuel purchas and sir walter raleigh were eagerly read new genres themes and ideas emerged in english literature during this time italian poetic forms especially the sonnet influenced english poets sir thomas wyatt was a successful early tudor poet known for his sonnets he greatly influenced henry howard the earl of surrey their totals miscellany published 1557 was a famous collection of experimental poetry which included other different writers as well aiming to make english as flexible as italian poetry Other notable poets in this group included Thomas Churchyard, George Gascoigne, and Edward de Vere, the Earl of Oxford. Another important work of the time is a mirror for magistrates, an ambitious and influential historical verse narrative, updating medieval views on history and morals. Edmund Spenser's unfinished epic poem, The Fairy Queen. exemplified the ideas of the english renaissance sir philip sidney a scholar poet critic courtier diplomat and soldier represented the ideal english renaissance man tudor drama was influenced by medieval morality plays and classical models ralph royster doister by nicholas udall and gamma gurtens needle is considered the first english comedies combining elements of classical roman comedy with native burlesque late 16th and early 17th century drama flourished in england with the work of the university wits the wits included notable playwrights like christopher marlowe john lilly robert green thomas lodge thomas nash and thomas kidd they set the course for renaissance drama and paved the way for shakespeare regarded as the greatest dramatist and one of the greatest poets of all time the house of tudor the tudor dynasty with its five sovereigns six if lady jane grey is included holds a significant place in royal history led by henry the 7th of welsh origin the tudors successfully ended the war of the roses and established a prosperous rule henry 
his son Henry VIII, and his three children, Edward VI, Mary I, and Elizabeth I, collectively ruled England for 118 eventful years. During this era, England emerged as a prominent European colonial power, with figures like Sir Walter Raleigh participating in the exploration and conquest of the New World. Additionally, English campaigns in Ireland solidified the country's control over the region. The Tudor period fostered cultural and social changes, with the Tudor court contributing to the European Renaissance by nurturing talented individuals like William Shakespeare, Edmund Spencer and Cardinal Wolsey. Religiously, the Tudor period witnessed three significant changes in the official religion leading to the martyrdom of many followers of both Protestantism and Roman Catholicism. The Reformation induced tension between the two factions and played a crucial role in the history of the succession. Henry VII When the Tudor dynasty is mentioned, most people focus on Henry VIII, Elizabeth, and the notable events of their reigns, such as the Armada and Henry VIII's multiple wives. Surprisingly, few mention the dynasty's founder, Henry VII. Henry Tudor's rise to the throne was a dramatic tale, marked by force and the death of the incumbent monarch, Richard III, on the battlefield. As a young boy of 14, he had fled England for Burgundy, seeking safety as the strongest Lancastrian claimant to the throne during the turbulent War of the Roses. During his exile, support for the Lancastrian cause persisted, despite the ongoing conflict with the Yorkist rulers, Edward IV and Richard III. In the summer of 1485, Henry returned to the British Isles aiming to gather more backing for his claim. He set foot in Wales, his homeland, where he enjoyed considerable support and began his march towards London, gaining followers along the way. On August the 7th, he landed at Mill Bay on the Pembrokeshire coast, starting a journey that would lead him to the English throne. Henry VIII Henry VIII is one of the most prominent kings in English history, known for his significant contributions during his reign. He ascended the throne on April 21, 1509, after the death of his father, Henry VII. As a powerful and charismatic figure, Henry VIII is famous for his eventful love life and his pivotal role in establishing the Church of England. Henry VIII had six wives in total, Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr. His desire to divorce Catherine of Aragon and marry Anne Boleyn led him to break with the Roman Catholic Church and create the Church of England. In addition to religious reforms, Henry VIII focused on strengthening the country's maritime capabilities. He significantly expanded the Royal Navy, increasing its size by tenfold. He played a vital role in promoting shipbuilding and establishing key dockyards such as Deptford and Woolwich. Born on June 28, 1491 at Greenwich Palace, Henry VIII had three legitimate children, Mary with Catherine of Aragon, Elizabeth with Anne Boleyn and Edward with Jane Seymour. All three of his children would later rule England. One of his significant contributions to naval history was the launch of his flagship, the Mary Rose, in 1511. Anne Boleyn Anne Boleyn, also spelled B-U-L-L-E-N, Boleyn, was the second wife of King Henry VIII of England and the mother of Queen Elizabeth I. Her marriage to Henry and the events surrounding the annulment of his first marriage to Catherine of Aragon led to the English Reformation and Henry's break with the Roman Catholic Church. Anne's father was Sir Thomas Boleyn, later Earl of Wiltshire and Ormond. After spending some of her childhood in France, 
She returned to England in 1522 and became a prominent figure at Henry's court, attracting many admirers. Her intended marriage to Lord Henry Percy was stopped on Henry's orders by Cardinal Wolsey, and at some point, the king himself fell in love with her. Thomas Cromwell. In actuality, Cromwell experienced a remarkable ascent from being the son of a Putney blacksmith to becoming the chief minister of Henry VIII. A man of extraordinary talent and an immense capacity for hard work, Cromwell wielded significant influence over England's political and religious landscape for around 10 years. He dealt ruthlessly with those who opposed him and his royal master, including his rival Thomas More and Henry's infamous second wife Anne Boleyn. However, his downfall came after orchestrating Henry's short-lived marriage to Anne of Cleves. Subsequently, he was imprisoned at the Tower of London and ultimately faced execution in 1540. Mary the 1st. Mary the 1st of England reigned as queen from 1553 to 1558 CE. She was the eldest daughter of Henry VIII of England and Catherine of Aragon. Her reign was marked by her efforts to restore Catholicism in England, which earned her the nickname Bloody Mary due to her persecution of Protestants. As a queen regnant, Mary faced challenges from prejudiced male courtiers and even a usurper Lady Jane Grey before her reign even began. She successfully quelled the White Rebellion in 1554 CE. However, her marriage to Philip of Catholic Spain was met with opposition and disapproval. Despite facing obstacles and controversy during her reign, Mary became the first queen to rule England in her own right. She passed away in 1558 due to cancer, and her half-sister Elizabeth I succeeded her as queen. leading England back to Protestantism. While Elizabeth is often remembered more prominently, Mary's historical significance as the first ruling queen of England remains noteworthy. <laughs>